Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyle, community and neighborhoods. And now from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning and welcome to the talk show All Things Moore County. Dorothy, you're um you you're as wrapped up in that new music as I am, huh? Yes, it seems to be. Yes. You just didn't want to stop playing it, and you figured no. you'd drown me out. Of course. Um, you know, August is going to mark the beginning of the 13th year of the show. Hard to believe it's been that long. Isn't it crazy? Yes. And um, even though the show originally was entitled um, All Things Real Estate mm -hmm. back in 09 and 10, um, we changed the name of the show to All Things More County, I think, in 2011. Yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, how many times have you heard me talk with guests? And I'm always trying to ask them, like, you know, how'd you get to Moore County? Where'd you come from? We have so many transplants around here. Yeah, I mean, I would say 90% of the guests that we've had mm -hmm. have been transplants, even though they're here. They call Moore County home. Yep. And we it, have such an attractive personality here in Moore County. We do. We do. I think I think we do. <laughs> um, we we uh, we find that people who come here wish they had started here, but they didn't. But today we're going to be able to um, blow through all of that because um, my guest is actually a um, lifelong bona fide <laughs> resident of Moore County, who I had the opportunity to meet about two almost two and a half years ago, um, maybe about 30 months ago, and I'm talking about um, real estate broker um, Victoria Riddle, um, who is originally from Carthage and still is, actually. Um, she was a 1995 Union Pines High School graduate. She went to college, and then she got her master's at St. Andrews in business. And when I had met her, she was... I guess on the other side of a design consulting business that she was doing. And um, for lots of reasons that you're going to hear today, she, um, she wound up by throwing her hat into the real estate ring. And we're all delighted that she did for lots of reasons, which you'll also be able to pick up today. Um, so Victoria, you're in rare air, but because you are born and raised in Carthage. That's right. Yep. You and you, you and your brother, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about your family and your background. Um, just getting through school, um, because really we don't know that you you know because you've seen so many changes here. I've Most, seen a lot of changes. We're transplants. <laughs> That's right. Right. So I actually started at Carthage Elementary. Right. Uh, I went to their farm life and then went to Union Pines. That's where I graduated. Right. And we live, my family has a farm in Carthage. It's a hundred year old farm. It's a century farm. It's one of nine in, uh, in Moore County. And so our, our family, my great grandparents were farmers. And then in 1960, my grandfather started a John Deere dealership in Carthage. And so... Your grandfather my did? My grandfather did. I, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Sam Riddle. Okay. And uh, then my dad, he graduated from NC State, and he came back and worked with my grandfather at the company. And I, we all did, my, me and my brother. Um, but we... So, so it was just me and my brother. My mom mm -hmm. is from here also. She's from Carthage, and she was a nurse at First Health for, th she's still currently there, 30 is she really? years. Yeah. Is she really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> so your grandfather started the business in 1960? Mm -hmm, so that's 61 years 61 ago. 61 years ago. And when did your dad um, get into it? I mean, he grew up, he came home, decided to stay at home and not leave Carthage? Yeah, we all kind of just were always in it you know i remember riding the bus from carthage in like first grade and being dropped off with my dad and really um and cleaning tractors yeah it was always about hard work and, <laughs> and always working and i think my dad he was raised the same way um as i speak to people in moore county um and your name comes up um 
your family is is well known. Your father was well known. Yes. I didn't uh, realize the connection with your grandfather. I just learned that today. Mm-hmm. Um, because um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, right. originally, you're going to have to walk me through uh, a century farm okay? and explain to me, you said there are nine of them in Moore County. That's right. What um, What are the characteristics of a century farm that gives it that name other than just the time frame? So that's the main thing is that it's in your family for over 100 years. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have one of nine, which... You know, when I grew well, when I grew up too, but especially like with my grandfather and my dad when they were growing up, Moore County was a more farming, right? So all these developments now right. were land that people had their tobacco on or soybeans or wheat. And even with our farm, that was what we had. So tobacco was really big when I was growing up. I was going to ask, what did you farm? Tobacco? We had tobacco. We leased most of our property out because my dad and my grandfather were in the business. And they did hay. That was one of the crops that they did themselves. But we leased out a lot of our land. We have a 185-acre farm currently still. And, you know, so back, it's been everything, any kind of crop that there was they've done it on the farm and now so it's changed tobacco is not really common anymore right um now they you know do hemp right up the road so that is that right that's right and and most of our property now uh we have a greenhouse and we have um they you know wheat soybeans corn that's pretty much what will be seen on our property and you are still leasing out the we property? We still lease out, yeah. My dad and my grandfather did do some farming. Um, the last uh, thing they did was hay. But after my dad, they both passed away in the last 10 years. And so we don't, we're not active in it. We still have all the equipment, but we're not active. Our family isn't necessarily on the property. Your, um, your dad passed away five or six years? Six years ago. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, 10. And your dad had had an accident. It was not mm-hmm. a, uh, it was an untimely That's passing. That's right, yeah. What um, would have been, and I know you were very close to your dad, mm-hmm. and your dad was very well known and respected in Moore County. Um, what, if your dad were still here, and he was still involved and nothing had changed, what would have changed uh, on the farm? Anything? The, the, his, the business? The, so, uh, so we merged and we were a single store, John Deere dealership for 51 years. Single store. Single store. It was Riddle Equipment Company and uh, we were very, very successful. Uh, just like everything else, over time, the industry changed to wanting to control the pricing and just like with the car industry. So they wanted mergers to happen so that... Uh, they could control the market share. Sure. So we merged in 2011 with quality equipment. Okay. So now we're part of uh, 27 stores. So I think as the business would have had to continue to grow just like it has, uh, the farming side, which is with anything around here, ha- ends up taking second because the which was always first. So for so many years, the farming is what. I mean, it's what kept everybody going here, Mm -hmm. kept our family alive, kept, Mm -hmm. kept, you know, just, that's just the way it was here. And now it's more business, you know? So I think that as far as the farm is concerned, we would continue to have leased out the property, but I do think they would have, um, stayed in the hay and done, you know, maybe got some livestock. We had livestock at one time and we just over time just you know we just were too involved in the business right so your dad did oversee the um the merger with quality mm-hmm. he yeah, was still the, for that okay. and it's one of those things you just had to do to be to stay competitive mm-hmm. in fact he told me he said i didn't want him to do it cuz i'd spent my whole life preparing to be the uh-huh. new next Sammy Riddle right and I um, went to school for it everything to do that and he said if we don't merge it'll be an empty building in 5 or 10 years and that's exactly what would happen it, you I know? Was, was he right he was right he was exactly right yeah i didn't understand it at the time so it would it's 10 years almost to the day the end of this year will be our 10 years wow that we've merged with them and i didn't like it and i fought it in the beginning but 
and after everything played out, I understand it was the right move. But change is hard. It's always been hard for me because I didn't grow up in a bigger city. I grew up in a small town. So my mind is still more small town, even though I've had to adjust, which is, you know, even with Moore County, how much things have changed. Carthage, how much things are changing oh my now, gosh, right? Yeah. yeah, growing up in Carthage, I mean, I remember traveling here in the 1980s when it was it's a different world and I just always saw that there was not a whole lot for kids to do mm -hmm. um, what was it like growing up as, as a kid um, pre high school days I mean what did you do did you hang around the farm yeah I mean, we worked on our, we woke up every Saturday and mowed grass we raked under this magnolia tree that as soon as you'd get them raked up they would fall right back down right. it was we we always did stuff on the farm we didn't you know we didn't actually I did not have cable even ever see cable tv till I went to college isn't that crazy what yeah because we didn't have it we lived in the country we didn't have we had the great big oh that's great yeah satellite I never had a phone in my room I mean I just didn't have that kind of technology we didn't have it there so you graduated um, high school in 95, so mm -hmm. you were in college from 96 to 99 or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. That's only 20 some odd years ago. Yeah, and that was the first time I had, other than if I went to my friend's house, it was the first time I had seen cable TV because <laughs> we didn't have it. That's how, that's how much things have changed in such a quick amount of time. You said that your mom... Was, mm -hmm. is still working uh, as a nurse at First Health. How long has she been with First Health? Uh, probably close to 30 years now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. I, I had no idea. Yeah, a long time. So, oh, my God, that's that's tenure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 30 yeah. years. Yeah. Um, what did you learn from your dad? I mean, today, when you look back, wh um, what, what were some of the life lessons that you've taken with you from him? Yeah, you know, my dad was, and my grandfather both, they were very hard, honest uh -huh. workers. You uh -huh. know, they worked hard for their money and they were very, very honest and very generous. And when my grandfather died uh, and my dad, there were farmers. Cause so in the eighties time here was tough if you were in a farming yep. industry yep. and a lot of farmers were going to lose their farms. And right. if you lost your farm, you lost everything. If that's right, you know, that's how they made their money. My grandfather bailed out several farmers in Moore County and Lee County that when at his funeral, him and my father's both, their whole families came, they were crying and they made sure to let us know that if it wasn't for them, mm. They would have never, they're continuing, they're farmers right now. They would have never made it through that time. And your grandfather and father passed within five years of each other? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my It's goodness. a huge, huge hit to the family. <laughs> and so my dad was the only child, my grandmother's the only child, so it's a small family now, you know. It's just my grandmother's still alive. She's 93, me and my brother. So your brother, a younger brother, mm -hmm. so he lives on the farm. He does. And you're the um, you're the oldest. You're the you're the chosen daughter. I'm the chosen one. Yeah. Right. I was the firstborn. <laughs> so, what does that look like? Because roles change as we go on. Right. So basically, the responsibility. The company is still active. You know, Riddle Equipment is part owner of Quality Equipment, which is 27 stores. Uh, I'm the president of that company. We also started a um, small kind of real estate to put some of our real estate in because my family, back in, in their time, they didn't invest money. Mm -hmm. You know, in the country, people didn't invest money in the stock market. They put their money in land. land. Yeah, yeah, right. So we have Riddle Group, which is another company that I'm the president of, and we have some uh, rental property in there. So I'm pretty active in that. I have to take care of all of those things, which takes care of the family. And you have a six-year-old daughter? Seven. Seven years old. Yes. Addison. Yes. And um, you're raising Addison, mm -hmm. and um, she's a very spirited um, young lady. Very. Right? And, um, but very comfortable in her own skin. She is. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I don't think she feels like she's encumbered <laughs> or anything. Not at all. <laughs> freely associates with whatever. Yes. So she gets a chance to look at you. I mean, you're her role model. That's right. And she's seeing a, um, a working professional uh, 
businesswoman and mother yeah. all at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's probably too young at this point to, to get what the impressions are that are are etched in her mind with you, but she will when she looks back as she grows older. Yeah. Right? I hope so. Yeah. I feel like she, um, and I'm a single mom, yep. you know, so yep. she sees a lot of strong things. I mean, we have bad days, but you don't get to stay bad for long because you have to keep going. And I think she learned that at an early age, you know, and so I hope that it continues. I do not see, I doubt we'll see any um, changes in her. I think she's going to be a very strong woman. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I do too. Um, so maybe one of the things that she picks up from you uh, without even knowing what the word means is uh, resilience. Yes, that's right. Right? Yeah. Because you have to sometimes get up and dust yourself off and start again. Mm-hmm. And um, you set the tone as far as your attitude goes towards what your environment gives you. And she observes that, mm-hmm. and and you're right. So you're probably indirectly uh, providing a great positive influence. I hope so. And on her. and I moved back to the farm um, two years ago. Moved back from where? Well, just up the road. Just to be. I want Addison to grow up the way I grew up. Now I know things are different now, and it's rare that. Um, children grow up on a farm anymore right but I wanted her to have some of the way some of my upbringing because I do think I have I do think I have good skills that I picked up from that right that are harder to teach children now because they're on their iPads and uh, and she's into all that too but I you know on the farm she has the room to go outside and play she knows what a pond is you know she knows different trees, and you don't get that as much anymore. Are you, gra- are you gradually giving her some responsibility? Yeah, little by little. Yeah, right. that's right. Has she taken to it? Yeah, she likes to help and do, and and I, I just think it's so important to, to, to do that. And, you know, I hope, because I feel like, she, I always say that she has a lot of street smarts, and that's one of the things you can't learn in school. Now, her schools, she's more difficult on her because she has you know she's just busy she's busy right her mind is going she wants to learn everything new all the time right but she's a very smart in things that maybe a lot of kids don't have you know and so I call it street smarts because she's getting that from just being kind of just fall she's with me all the time so she's she's around things that most kids wouldn't be around at her age and then with the farm and Mm -hmm. all the businesses and we have our renters and so she's constantly around a lot of different people what do you learn from your mom so my mom um my mom was very caring and my mom uh she had a completely different upbringing you know so hers was a lot harder and she was small town. Uh, her mom, her dad passed away when she was, I think, in the sixth grade. So oh, she, yeah. there was just a hard, they worked really, really hard for everything they had. My mom is, and her, her side of the family is super caring. And um, when my dad had his accident, my mom uh, quit everything. I mean, she was still employed at the hospital, but she took care of my dad. And she took care of him in a way that, people don't do anymore you know it was the old school like you know and she never left his side the whole time that he you know from his accident so I would say that's the number one takeaway for my mom is just you know her caring attitude and okay well said um we're going to come back in the second set um you did a great job of painting a background a backdrop of of where you came from and we want to talk a little bit more also about today and, and tomorrow. Okay. Um, Victoria Riddle is our guest. She's a bona fide Moore County resident, uh, lifelong. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our second set of All Things Moore County. Our guest uh, for the whole hour is uh, Moore County native, 
um, and current resident, uh, Victoria Riddle. And um, it's refreshing to be able to um, speak to somebody who's not just a transplant. As, as When you grew up here as a child, compared to what it's like today, where you take your daughter to school, you probably have a, as great an appreciation um, of the amount of changes that have gone on here. Absolutely. And and to be here, you're perched in a very unique um, vantage point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have never, even like we were talking about my dad when he died when he died six years ago, he would have never believed. That's how quick it has changed. Right. How much change has happened in six years. Um, but definitely from when I was in school to like farm life, right. and now my daughter's in school at farm life, it's completely different, completely right. different. Uh, down to the size of the classrooms, we had smaller classrooms, the number of schools that have, you know, came from when I was in school, there was just, you know, a couple schools and then, uh, we didn't actually have a, um, middle school. We stayed at far at farm life the whole all the way to union ponds you're kidding no we didn't have a middle school then farm life was from first to eighth grade Mm -hmm. or kindergarten to eighth grade yeah i had no no idea yep all the schools were we did well on that side of town uh there were no to my there may have been some in southern ponds Aberdeen, maybe one that came but no that you went all the way to eighth grade so now you can't do that the class there's just so many people there's so many kids you know was there ever a time when you thought you would um grow up and leave Moore County? Well, yeah, because I always, you always want what you don't have, right? Okay. What did you want? uh, Well, I always, you know, I didn't have cable TV. I wanted to have that stuff. I wanted the phone in my room, just those small luxuries that when I went to college, all my friends from bigger cities, they had those things, you know? So I, I went to school in Asheville and I just assumed that I would never go home, you know. But actually, while I was there, I, I started my career in, um, when I went to Mars Hill College as a fashion design major. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted to get so far out of Moore County that I would go somewhere, big city, design uh, clothes, that kind of thing. But so did a lot of kids at that time. That's right. They wanted to leave Moore County. They wanted to leave, yeah. And um, so... Mm-hmm. I, I went to school for that, and while I was in school, I was around people that were from big cities, and they were like, your dad has a John Deere dealership, and you're not going to school to go and work with your dad? And I was like, no, I want to do something different. But when I saw other people wanted what I had, you know, they were in the big cities, and right. they wanted the, the fact that we lived on a farm, and we had land, and yeah. we, had, we could fish in our pond. They wanted that, and so... Uh, as I grew, you know, because your first couple of years in college, you're not taking anything important anyway. You're taking your luck. You know, you're taking the foundation stuff. Uh-huh. So a couple of years later, um, I realized that the smartest thing to do, and it's what my parents wanted for me, was to major in business and come back and be active in the business. That, mm-hmm. you know, to be in business independently for 51 years. It's crazy. It's crazy. It doesn't yeah. happen. Right. You know? That's correct. So the fact that I could just walk into something that was already formed, mm-hmm. strong, uh-huh. you know, it just made sense to do that. So mm-hmm. I changed majors halfway through. And, mm-hmm. and th- any, anyway, with business, you can do anything. So... So Moore County got back on And I came home. Right. And you knew right after you got out of college or after your, yeah, after graduate school, you were going to come home and go into the family business. Well, I graduated and my undergraduate and I came home. And then when we merged, and so that's when I got my my graduate degree. When we merged uh, in 2011. Right. My dad told me, he's like, you know, you're a woman in a male industry, which I was. You right. know, I was working in John Deere. And he said, we're going to be merging. So we'll have, it's going to be a different structure. You're gonna have, we're going to have a CEO. We're going to have all these things that we didn't have before. And, you know, you should go back and get your master's degree. And so that's what I did. Just so I would have just more on, on my foundation to make it strong. And so I, I, I'm glad I did. Yeah. Very glad. So between the um, the transitions of both your grandfather and your dad's passing, um, having Addison, um, becoming a mom, yeah, um, being the president of Riddle, um, what was the Riddle Equipment and Riddle Group, yeah, 
you decided that you didn't have enough on your plate. <laughs> no. <laughs> you said, I need more, right? That's right. <laughs> and um, if you want to, you know, um, tell the story a little bit about how you and I met, um, you were introduced to me, uh-huh. um, and you started looking around, um, I guess, your family's holdings, your role in run, helping to run the family business, and you wanted to expand your um, horizons a little bit. In the real estate? I think so. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's what you did. Well, so I went. So well, well, I actually transitioned from when my dad died. Um, I got asked to start a program in Moore County for their remodeling. So that would have been five and a half years ago, and um, we were. It was a, it Lowe's. They were a vendor of ours, that's right. and so they asked me to start a program for them. They saw the changes that were happening here. Pete, there were uh, all these people moving in and buying these older houses. Mm -hmm. They needed bathroom, kitchen remodeling done, and that was um, something that they didn't do, and they definitely didn't specialize in it. So I started a program, and we had contractors, and it was a a very in-depth program for them, and so that's how I got into the remodeling. And while I was in remodeling, I realized that uh, I had – you know, the changes that were happening because I was more, I was, I was more involved. I was in Southern Pines and Pinehurst, not just in Carthage. And I watched Whispering Pines blow up, you know, (laughs) and I was like, people want to live in Whispering Pines, you know, because in my mind, it was a sleepy community. It was a sleepy community. Absolutely. So I was going in these houses and I was, these people were spending a hundred thousand dollars in their, you know, kitchen and bathroom. And I'm like, who are these people? Where did they come from? You know? Right. And I started to see it in our John Deere business too, because people were coming and buying tractors, but they weren't really farming. They just wanted something to, for their garden. And so I saw it in a small form, but when I got into the remodeling, I really saw the changes. And the reason I chose to go into real estate was when my dad died and my grandfather, I inherited so much property because they, yeah. Yeah. they did not, they didn't do anything with their money but buy land. And so in their minds, this is land that may or may not be valuable one day, but I saw that it was changing and I wanted to learn more about it. And, and that's one of the reasons I actually went with four properties was because I wanted yeah. the, I wanted to learn, you know, I wanted to understand the different communities because I didn't know a lot about, you know, the changes that have happened in Southern Pines, right? <laughs> right. So, I mean, is it a safe thing to say, um, a statement that in the last 15 years, mm-hmm. the landscape of Moore County has changed drastically? Completely. How would you describe it? Um, you know, so... I feel like for when I grew up there, there was, it was a big deal to drive to McDonald's in Southern Ponds, you know, like, it, I mean, or, or Howard Johnson's. Yeah. There was nothing here. There was nothing to do. There was, there was nothing. I mean, there was nothing. And, uh, <laughs> Dorothy's <laughs> nodding her head. She, she agrees with you. Yes. Yeah. There really was. Nothing. So if you were to talk to someone to today, yeah. I'll tell you, I was in a run group a couple of years ago, and the lady said there was 34 people in there. And she said, I'm assuming that no one is from here, because we were talking about the roads and, like, different places to go. And I was the only person out of 34 people uh-huh. in this group that was actually from here. So if you were to ask the other 33 people in there, they would never believe that there was nothing here, right? Mm, right. Because they love it. They call their parents. Everybody moves down here. But... For me, I, there was nothing here. So, like I say, when we, if we went on Friday to McDonald's, that was a big deal because in Southern Pines, Southern Pines was the biggest change to me because there was nothing there, and then you know there was different sides of the tracks, and now everything's just one. You know, it's one. Right. And um, there's so so many small businesses now. I mean, it's yep. amazing. Yeah. It, it really is. When we, uh, when we come back in the third set, let's start by talking about how the landscape is changing in Carthage. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and from there, I want to talk a little bit with you about your, um, your successful real estate business that you have cultivated mm-hmm. as a self-generator, which I have a lot of respect for, and um, what it feels like to do something completely on your own, yeah. right, separate. Um, our guest is Victoria Riddle, and uh, we'll be back in the third set.
Welcome back to our final set of All Things Moore County with Victoria Riddle. Um, you've taken us from the time you, you grew up here as a kid to we were talking in the last set about the changing landscape in Moore County. Um, your observations about Southern Pines um, from your vantage point are really interesting. But I would think that your vantage point about Carthage would be even are equally interesting because mm -hmm. you're at the you're at the beginning of seeing changes in Carthage. Mm -hmm. Did you ever th think you would? No, uh, definitely not. I think that I I've said that I thought Carthage would grow in the next five years. I said that last year, right? And now uh, it's happening right now. In fact, when I when I came on with you, when when I, we started working with you, I told you that. I wanted to focus on Carthage because I mm -hmm. I felt like I know I know Carthage. I feel like I miss Carthage. You know, I know everything about Carthage. Yep, I and I own you. a lot of property in Carthage. So I wanted to focus there and I felt like where I'm at now would be where we would be in five years. Right. So it's definitely the same thing happened in the Western Pines. Um it happened so fast, you know, it was like, I saw that might happen over five or 10 year time frame, And it ha I mean, it happened in what, five or six years, right? The whole complete change. And, uh, there's more, there's a lot of property in Carthage. It, there's a lot of, uh, yeah. farming that used to be farming and, yep. um, there's a lot of developing happening now. So my, my question is, since you've been approached, um, by different, uh, organizations about developing some property mm -hmm. that you all might have. A philosophical um, question. Do you feel um, on one hand you might you may want to work with some of your property with the developers but on the other hand do you have a desire to preserve what Carthage is what you remember it growing up as you're kind of like right smack in the middle. Yeah of that. it so two things just like with my dad we if we didn't merge right. at that time, we right. could have just been dead, you know, five years later. So I know there are some properties that we have that if you don't move when it's moving in that area, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it could just be skipped over property. Mm -hmm. But then there's other pieces of property, like where we live, that we would never touch, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, in the in, in town even. You know, I know like what happened in downtown Southern Pines. Um, you know, we have a cute little downtown mm -hmm. and eventually we'll make some changes and I'm sure, yeah. you know, and, and I would like to be a part of that because we have property on, in the town, but that we bring in the right things and that we, you know, rent to the right people. And, um, you know, when we bring in like the bigger, you know, like the pharmacies and all that stuff that we still try to maintain the culture of Moore County mm -hmm. because that is what I feel like has brought people here, you know, and if we change it so fast, Carthage is still one of those, like the buggy, you know, that they had their buggy, buggy festival. festival. Uh -huh. So if, if, you know, the buggy means something to me, means something to you, well, it still needs to mean something 20 years from now, you right. know? And right. so even like for one of the main reasons I got in real estate was that I feared that if something happened to me and it was up to, you know, uh, a developer showed up at, at our farm with a suitcase of cash, and it was my two nieces and my daughter. They don't know anything about the property. They don't know the heritage of the land. They don't know about the culture of Moore County right. that they would sell to the first person that showed up. So right. what I want to do is um, try to try to balance both of those aspects right. and do it um, do it the right way for my family that worked hard to have it would be proud. And yeah. then it also, um, you know, we, it helps my family prosper too, you know, and, and it's something that they'll be able to have in their future, our children. Yeah. Well said. I talk all the time about when I first came here in 1979 and started coming down here all the time, I was attracted to Moore County and I was attracted to certain pockets of areas mm -hmm. that today have not changed at all since the 1980s. Um, areas like Knollwood right. or Weymouth or the village of Pinehurst um, or like you talked about your Century Farm, yeah. um, those pockets are still there. Even though the landscape is changing, mm -hmm. 
the pockets actually become more valuable. That's right. And I, I feel like um, they need to stay that way. That's right. Right? Because yeah. that's that's the pull, you know, like, like we were talking earlier. If we bring everything that Raleigh has or everything that Fayetteville has, then those, the people that are moving from those areas to come here, it changes, right? right? So you still have to have those pockets of areas to keep it, you know, to keep the culture alive, which I feel like gets lost, you know, and that's what's happened in the big cities. But that's why people are moving here, because they want that. They want that life. You're, um, I'm going to fast forward to um, your real estate brokering career, because, mm-hmm. I mean, just this week, you're working on a, a multiple offer situation mm-hmm. in Carthage in a development that 20 years ago wasn't there yeah, it, was, it was all woods it was yeah it was farmland <laughs> and we're talking about the area next to uh, new century yeah, middle Forest, school Forest ridge Forest ridge mm-hmm. and across the street from cabin branch mm-hmm. and um we were at the very beginning of cabin branch we were the listing brokers out there mm-hmm. um and we've seen it grow now it's a vibrant community and you're working with i don't know how many offers you received but um you're still at the tail end of trying to get it all put together. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I put it on the market Monday at 1030. So pretty much been on the market for two days. Right. Uh, four or five offers, you know, and if we, you know, it, it's just, it's crazy to me. <laughs> when you started, um, it, it, when you started in the real estate business, uh, it was about two years ago, a yeah. little more than two years ago. Um, could you have ever imagined, um, the type of demand we're seeing right now for from buyers for, and the seller market, how strong it is. And no, absolutely not. People. You know, I, I really, you hear about stuff. I heard about this happening in the Raleigh's and in the you yeah. know, California, but never, ever thought it would be here. And I never thought it would be in Carthage, you know. You and I together got a glimpse of it last August mm-hmm. uh, working you were working with me on a, a property at Fairwoods on seven mm-hmm. we wound up with six or eight offers mm-hmm. I mean it was like a pinball game I and mean, every one that was my first multiple offer situation right and I think for you that was the first time you'd seen due diligence go that crazy what, what, it, one of the biggest you know one of the due diligence um, offers on the multiple offer was forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars <laughs> and I yeah, my jaw dropped. Right. Because most of them were between five and 10000 But even that was hefty. Yeah. And earnest money now has become not, not important. It's all about due diligence. That's money. right. And I think when I saw, you know, it was one thing for me to see it and have a reaction just from a couple of years being in it. But to know the amount of time that you've been in it yeah. and to see your reaction, I was like, wow, things are changing. You yeah. know, and they they have stayed that way. I have not... Um, I've had, you know, a lot of closings in the last, I would say in the last year, even yep. the ones I worked on with you and then yep. my own, I don't think we've had anything close under asking. Oh, they've all been over, right? All been over. All been over. And um, it, it's, uh, people are sometimes waiving repairs or mm-hmm. waiving appraisals. Uh, just this past week, um, you know, I put a, a buyer under contract on a home. It was under 300,000. The multiple offer that we were you and I did together in Fairwoods was over 750,000. <laughs> right. So I could understand today where a $40,000 due diligence amount could come from. But on this sub $300,000 home, there were seven offers. And my client put up, you ready for this? 90 thousand dollars in due diligence (laughs) he wanted the home and he understood the dynamics of the market and it wasn't even the highest offer on the Mm -hmm. home but it was the highest amount of due diligence Mm -hmm. money and that's what resonates with sellers today Mm -hmm. it's completely different right and you know what my fear is is when it changes if it if it changes back yeah because now they're conditioned to look Mm -hmm. for those things right Mm -hmm. um like today you know i had a in my my offers now they they range from 500 to fifteen thousand dollars of due diligence right but 
you don't even look at the 500s anymore, you know? It's That's like right. people don't even pay attention to that, which two years ago would have been a good offer, you know? Do you find it's hard um, with your sellers because your expectations are so... They hear the stories about their friends who are selling their homes. Mm -hmm. Do you have to coach them and sort of, you know, bring them back down to earth a little bit? Well, I think the main thing is not so much on the price because they pretty much know they're going to get mm -hmm. good money for their house. Mm -hmm. But if they bought it, let's say, four years ago, even, just, just four years years ago the things that they were that their agent told them that they needed to do to buy their house are completely different than the things that they need to be looking for that's right. in a contract now that's right? right that's right so we have to stress i think you have to constantly remind them that that the things that we're looking for now mm -hmm. are different and how different the market is because mm -hmm. that's how much it's changed so quick right and and right. and they don't know because they've bought a house uh three years ago and things are night and day different than then you um you've got we only have three minutes but i do want to ask you because i think you've made great like ridiculous strides i mean you're you're you self-actualize, you're independent, you, um, you're smart. Um, you've found a new um, strength or power in, in doing this on your own mm -hmm. outside of the family. I mean, you are stepping out on your own to do this in addition to everything else you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's got to make you feel good. It does. I feel like when I started it, I did it more for my family. Right. And now I've seen that... Um, I've been very successful on my own That's doing right. it for myself. That's right. So it is. It's a, it's a great feeling. Yeah. And and again, I keep going back to um, I'm, I love when I see kids look up at their parents. And in real estate, you've got so many moms who are in the business. What a great role model yeah. you are for your daughter. Um, she's going to grow up and thinking, well, this is what I'm going to. I can That's see right. myself. And um, it's a completely different view than what like my sister's got growing up when we were kids mm -hmm. and it's a gift that you give your child mm -hmm. and um yeah it's got to give you a full overall complete completedness i guess or it does and so you know i have my signs out in carthage yeah you do with my face <laughs> yes you do and so she's like mommy yeah my friend saw you on the <laughs> sign by mcdonald's and so it makes her feel good you right. know and and she looks for that and she wants that one day there's um um, I've, I've enjoyed, um, doing the show and many times we've sh uh, talked on the show with people who have sort of reinvented themselves mm -hmm. where they've started one career path and they've kind of pivoted to another or they've expanded and done so something different. And you are doing that in, in a way you're, you're paying homage to where you came from. That's but, right. So having a, another chapter in your book is, is the best way to stay on your toes, the best way to stay young and vital mm -hmm. and you are now in a position where you're counseling uh, buyers and sellers um, not just on behalf of the riddle family but on behalf on their behalf mm -hmm. so you're becoming an advocate for other families That's right. uh, aside from your own yeah yeah um, we're impressed thank you yeah thank we're, you. we're impressed I mean um, it is it's a pleasure to uh, to work with you but it's mostly your credibility and your honesty uh, and your heart come through when you speak, and that's what people will get when they um, they get a chance to meet you in person. Yeah. And um, so, whether people want to be buying or selling or talking about land, I mean, they can reach you. Yeah. Um, where can they get up with you? Uh, my phone number is nine one zero six three nine nine zero four six. And you've got some uh, information on the Four Properties website. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, so I have my bio it tells all all the things we talked about today. For all the people moving <laughs> here, if they want to meet a celebrity who actually grew up in Moore County, call call That's Victoria right. Riddle. <laughs> Um, thanks for coming and joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Uh, next time we'll get Addison here. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Everybody, Victoria Riddle has been our guest. Um, we'll talk with you next week. Have a great, um, a great week. Thank you.